Hello, Montrose, and welcome to our conversation series and podcast, Motown Knows. My name is Annalyn Winfrey, and I'm a reporter at the Montrose Daily Press. We're here to t- today to talk about one of the biggest ongoing stories in town, the mascot changes at Montrose High School and Centennial Little School. Since a bill passed in the Colorado legislature banning Native American mascots last spring, the school district has been deliberating about how to change the two mascots. We're now close to the finish line with new names picked out for both schools, but there's still a lot of work to be done. To talk about what's going to happen before the deadline comes up on June 1st, we're joined by Montrose High School Principal Jim Barnhill, as well as Montrose High School Teacher and Student Council Sponsor Renee Manuel. Before we get started, I'd like to thank Delta Montrose Electric Association for their sponsorship. Also, if any comments or questions come up during this conversation, log on to nabur.montrosepress.com and post them there. We'll be sure to answer. All right, so um, Jim, I'm going to start with you. Can you just tell us where we are at in the process right now here in late February? Sure. So let's see, we've adopted the new uh, mascot name. So we are now the beginning next year with the Montrose Red Hawks. And uh, we're working two phases for a logo. One phase is a uh, student contest for um, original work on what they would like to see as a mask and the other they, the other avenue i guess we're, we're working on parallel with each other is through uh vip sports and their branding department and um myself and lyle and heidi and matt are all working on kind of getting a, a mascot ready to go to unveil here later this spring and that's where we're at. When we when we're talking about like what actually needs to get to high school, um, what's on your to do list over the next few months um, to change up at the at the school? Oh, we still have some unanswered questions like our uh, historical banners and things like that in the gym. So we're not really going to worry too much about them right now until we get some clarification on that. We have to uh, paint the inlines on the auxiliary gym floor. So that's going to have to be taken down to hardwood and repainted and then refinished. We have to paint some murals. You know, a lot of it is just painting and covering up and taking down. And then over a period of time, we'll start replacing. So it's something that doesn't have to be done like right this instant. other things in the works are uh, obviously wall mats for the gyms and chairs that say Indians and uh, obviously uniforms, all the different uniforms for every athletic and sporting event that we have. So a lot of ordering, a lot of buying, and we're going to break it down you know, over two different uh, budget years to get it done this year and next year. So that's kind of okay. I want to follow up with uh, with you about that in just a sec, but first I want to ask Renee a question real quick. Um, So uh, I wanted to ask you how students had input in the mascot decision um, and uh, yeah, how you worked with your students on student council um, for them to share their voice with uh, the committee in, in the process. So what Mr. Barnhill did was he brought the student council students together and went through the same process with them that he did with the adult committee members had. And um, the students were really, after that was done, the students just, their comments were, they were really thankful that somebody asked their opinion and what they wanted and what they thought. And it was pretty awesome to walk through and watch them come up with new ideas and how within their groups listen to everybody. So they were thankful for the input. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Because I mean, at the end of the day, the students are the ones who are going to be showing up to pep rallies and getting new merch and wearing the new decal on the forms and stuff. So um, hearing what they had to say was was important in the process for sure. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, yeah. So wait, Jim, to follow up on something that you were just talking about earlier, um, I wanted to ask you about the cost because um, we heard earlier in the fall when you did kind of a precursory survey of um, of what 
had all the logos on it. Um, the the cost estimate was about like five six hundred thousand dollars for Montrose and three hundred for Centennial. Um, so that was almost a million dollars for the district. But at the last um, school board meeting, Superintendent Scar Carrie C Stevenson said um, she was estimating that it would cost around six hundred k. Um, so can you talk about how that estimate has came, has fluctuated over the past couple months? Yeah, so <clears throat> a lot of it has fluctuated mainly because things like we weren't sure which way the mascot thing was going to was going to un unveil itself, you know, and mm -hmm. we were going to have to do a complete rebrand. Then you're talking the feather is gone, which means our main gym floor has to be redone. A lot of artwork has to be replaced and taken down. And so there's just a lot of additional costs. So with the with the Red Hawks, and we're going to incorporate that in with the feather into our into our logo series. Um, there's a lot of that stuff that doesn't have to take place now. So um, we're we're estimating we got about one hundred and fifty thousand dollars in uniforms that we have to take care of over um, two budget years, and that also includes redoing all the sponsorship panels and the advertising panels on our scoreboards and and stuff on the various fields: baseball, soccer, football, both gyms. All those panels have to be redone. Um, as well as, like I said, the, the wall mats on either end of the gym. So um, we're going to get it done for a lot less than that, I think. I think we're going to be looking around a quarter of a million dollars for the high school, phased in over a couple of years. And actually, we're not, like I said before, we're not actually going to go in and replace all of the different murals and everything you know we're just going to repaint and take some down and then over time we'll start phasing the new mascot in with the new murals and to uh decorate and brand the school Hope gotcha that yeah that, that and with the feather of course that's on your uh uh shirt with the with the basketball logo right yeah, big playoff game tonight, everybody. You know, you probably you won't see this till after the game, but we play rifle in the first round of playoffs tonight. So looking for a packed house. Awesome. Um, so, um, so Renee, I want to I want to pose this question to you because you work so much directly with students. What does a mascot uh, mean for school spirit? It gives all of our students a sense of pride. So when we're um, cheering on all of our teams and all of our MHS organizations, it brings all of them together and to cheer everybody on. And that's, yeah, sense of pride. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, a shared mascot can kind of serve to unify the, mm -hmm. the student body in that way. Yes. Um, what role do you see student council in, um, what, what role do you think student council can play in um, integrating this new mascot, the, the Montrose Red Hawks? Um, I see the student council students as embracing it. Um, they were really thankful <clears throat> that Mr. Barnhill came to them asking their opinions along with the other organizations. So with that, it's going to carry on more positive and they're just going to embrace it next year and continue on with that pride with a whole new mascot. Right, yeah, because they, they were um, asked for input uh, during the process, right? So mm -hmm. they have that buy-in from the students themselves, at least the the ones who aren't graduating this year. Um, so they can carry that right. forward because they, they were able to be a part of that. Yeah, they'll, they'll embrace it in a positive form mm -hmm. starting in next school year. Awesome. Um, well, so Jim, what would you say is going to be the biggest challenge in this transition process? Oh, you know, I think just trying to keep everybody positive and on board. And, you know, we, we just all have to remember that this is not anything that any of us would have chose to do, but it's kind of that forced change. 
you know. So it's something we have to do. And um, I think both the committee that uh, <clears throat> started out on this mascot change journey, as well as all the students that are involved, have all looked at it as, hey, let's just make the most of it and be positive. And um, I know there's <clears throat> a lot of folks that aren't happy with the change in the mascot. And so be it. Personally, I'm not thrilled that we have to change from being the Montrose Indians and 91 years of, of legacy. But, uh, you know, it is going to take time. You just, you, you don't just one, one year you're the Montrose Indians and the next year you're the Montrose Red Hawks. But I, you know, I'd be perfectly honest with you. I I'm expecting our community and our students to jump on board and where they're going to support our activities and our, and our, uh, our endeavors regardless of what our mascot name is. So I'm, I'm pretty proud about this, of this community for how well they support our kids and our programs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, um, something that I came up in a conversation with a student that I had a couple of weeks ago, one of the student leaders um, in Super Crew, were telling me how, you know, like, yeah, they, you do have to change the mascot now. And they weren't super happy that they had to change it, but they were excited and looking forward to the new legacy that they can create with um, all this, all the the new students down the line and uh, yeah. what this new mascot can mean for the community. Yeah, it's going to be, you know, the process itself has, has been uh, very fun and interesting and to see the positive energy and uh, just the creative, the creativeness of everyone that's come out to say, all right, let's let's try to keep it focused on, uh, you know, reflecting our community and also kind of that. How do we celebrate the past and then move forward? So I, I've always thought that was a, a very uh, astute and clever way to to bridge the Montrose Indians with the Montrose Red Hawks. So I'm. I'm excited about those possibilities. Awesome. Um, I just saw this question that I'd like to pose to both of you. Um, what have you guys, uh, just kind of bouncing off of what you were just saying, um, Jim, what have you guys, what have you learned about the community through this, about the, the general community as well as students through this process um, since I want to say, yeah, like over last summer? I don't know that I've learned anything, to be honest with you. I've always known this community is so supportive and so generous and and they back our kids and they back our schools and, uh, you know, I, and they continue to do so. So this is just, like I said, one of those things that we're not choosing to do. It's something that we have to do and uh, we're going to make the best of it. So I, I think that's a pretty cool thing. Renee, how about you? Um, I didn't, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me. I didn't really learn anything either, but um, I think of um, the fall of next year and I think of how we are a one town high school and how awesome this community comes together um, for all of our organizations, K through 12. And I can't help but think of um, Friday night lights in the fall. And when the community comes our games and they see that our students have embraced it, um, our new mascot, they're just going to follow in and join in. And I think it's going to be pretty awesome to see right at our Friday Night Lights. Awesome. Yeah, like uh, being new to Montrose this this summer and fall, going to football was on the top list of my priority for getting to know the town and getting to know the spirit of the town. And those were really amazing um, events where a lot of people, students, um, community members, alums, parents came together to support their hometown team. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Yep. Yeah, it's awesome. And I think it's going to come together in the fall, and it's going to be pretty awesome to see and be a part of. Awesome. Um, well, um, what can the community expect uh, within the next few weeks? Um, Jim, you alluded to a something coming up about the logo unveiling um, next month. Yeah, it's either, we might even push it back. It's We're just so jam-packed with activities and stuff. So we might push it back until after spring break. But we'll get out in plenty of time. But we're going to have a big mascot unveiling. 
as well as an auction. We're going to uh, um, invite the community in and um, hopefully, you know, have a showcase of our different activities and, and, I, and I'm not really sure the format just yet, but I, I do know I, we want to um, offer up to sell a lot of our Indian uh, imagery that we can no longer display. So uh, we have a cool totem pole that people are interested in. You know, we have wall, wall mats and chairs and old uniforms and all kinds of things that we're going to put out there for um, to help raise money to buy new shirts and uniforms and staff shirts and kids mostly kids shirts you know when you think about 1400 kids and giving everybody a new t-shirt or two it's going to get it's going to get costly so but we want to represent and we want to uh, honor the work the kids in the community have done with the new mascot so we're going to get some new swag and get it out there for everybody and uh, and uh, carry on that's the goal just carry on and and uh be as successful next year as we've been this year. That's the goal. Wonderful. Um, do you have anything else you'd like to add before we wrap things up? Uh, the only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to throw a pitch out there for the the new <laughs> the legacy T-shirts. So if you if you look on our website in the Spirit Store, you can uh, uh, really patch for the, the Montrose Indians legacy was developed and we have shirts um, that we're offering for sale to help raise money to buy new student shirts and uh, Lyle, and help John, with, uh, help defray some of the costs that the district's going to have to um, put out for all of the change. So anyway, it should be a lot of fun. Looking forward to it. And uh, I really appreciate like I said, all the support that we get from our students in our community. Awesome. Um, Renee, do you have anything else you'd like? Any parting words per se? I'm good. Thank you. Awesome. Okay. Well, that will wrap up this week's episode of Motown Knows. Thanks again to our guests, Jim Barnhill and Renee Manuel. Um, and if our conversation brought up any comments or questions, head to nabur.montrosepress.com and post them there. And thanks again to Delta Montrose Electric Association for their continued support. Motown Knows is created by Justin Tubbs and Josue Perez, edited by Sean Flannelly and Sean Fitzpatrick, and additional production support from myself, Annalyn Winfrey, and Cassie Knust. Thank you.